Laura, I guess when you look at Georgia eight weeks into the season and, and you're judging them as a team, do you take more credence in what they did in the opening week against Oregon and, and the game against South Carolina or the games that they've had against like Kent State and Missouri? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think they're more of the team that played against Oregon and South Carolina than the team that struggled a bit against Kent State and, and certainly the Missouri game. You know, when you look through an entire season and a team that's built to win a championship, which I believe Georgia is, it takes a lot. You're not, you're not going to just skate past all these teams. It doesn't matter the competition. And I know sometimes it sounds cliche, and we've heard Nick Saban say this a lot, but you're going to get the best from everyone. You've got that target on your back. I think Georgia has been a victim of that a little bit, something that certainly they wouldn't make excuses about. But I believe um, – the committee undervalued them a little bit this week, and I think they're a better team than even the number three. But they're, they're going to have to prove it against Tennessee in a huge one here, certainly. I guess I'll ask. Uh, just I know you've seen Tennessee a couple a couple times yep. this year. How much better do you think? Like how how far has this offense gone in the, in the calendar year just because we saw a little bit of it last year and kind of the right. beginnings of it and then it's just completely taken off like how drastic of a step do you think that's been it's one of the most drastic improvements I think we've seen in recent years in college football and you think about teams that have turned it around you know LSU from 2019 comes to mind a team that people didn't really think was going to be as good as they were and that ended up winning the national championship but what Tennessee's done and what Josh Heupel's done is truly remarkable. And I think it's because of his scheme, you know, that really matters here, right? Like you think about uh, sometimes it's just that people stockpile talent or they get more out of talent than we expect. But this is a lot of it has to do with coaching and even a culture change in a lot of ways, which is hard to do. So I think they deserve a ton of credit there. And it's really an offense that a lot of us feel like is indefensible. Now, I think there are some ways, you know, to try to slow them down, but they're still such a threat. And to have the weapons that they have at receiver too, performing in the way that they are, a quarterback that certainly should be a Heisman candidate in Hendon Hooker, you know, that doesn't happen if you don't have everything work together perfectly. So um, some of it, a small bit of it might be some luck and, and just fortuitous timing, but I think a lot of it has to do with the scheme that Heifel's put in and the way that he's coached this team. A lot of talk about the Tennessee offense, but statistically Georgia's right there with them yeah. in terms of a lot of the categories. Do you think this, this group is being overlooked? I do. Um, that's why I said I, I think they should be ranked higher than number three. I, I think the committee overlooked them a little bit. And, and listen, you know, the committee is looking at strength of schedule and they're comparing resumes. And I, I've been a mock committee member before, and, and you can understand why the numbers would factor in there, right? And they're, they're kind of waiting for Georgia to have what I guess we would call, you know, some huge signature win, even though you could say that Oregon was that, um, but at least at this point in the season. So the offense is probably not getting enough credit. And, and as much as we talk about the tight ends and certainly Brock Bowers and what they've done, I'm not sure that we're talking enough about Stetson Bennett. And on our show, on SEC Nation, we've given him a lot of credit and just uh, the way that he's made himself into one of the best college quarterbacks that we're seeing this season. We, we thought last season he wasn't the reason why Georgia was going to win the championship. And, and even when they won, you know, we probably didn't give him enough credit. But I think he's deserving of that now and a big reason why this offense should be talked about a little bit more. You said Georgia should be higher than three. Is that one or two? I mean, how, would, how would you chop it up? I'd put him at two. Uh, I, so I would do... At this point, I would say I, I do believe Tennessee should be one uh, just based off of the way that they've played and also having a huge win over Alabama. Um, I put Georgia at two. I put Ohio State at three. And then, you know, I agree with everything else. But, yeah, it's it's hard. Like, it, you know, you can you can make the case for all the four teams, right? Um, and certainly there's TCU lingering out there. And Alabama can change things if they continue to win. The scenarios are fascinating. We're, we're actually doing a lot of that on SEC Nation tomorrow because uh, I'm sure you guys have heard some of the people who say, well, maybe Tennessee should try and lose this game so they wouldn't have to, which no one's doing that, but you know what I mean? Maybe it's not bad for them if they lose this game because then they don't have to play Alabama in the SEC Championship. It's hard to beat Bama twice. Um, th there's just some wild scenarios with how this could play out. I, I think either way, it's pretty good for the SEC. Probably see a couple teams in there for the college football playoff. How have you seen over the past you know, eight or nine years uh, the, you know, the scenarios, you know, that, that yeah. four teams at stake rather than just two teams in the BCS? How have you kind of seen that uh, week to week as far as, you know, teams preparing and teams, uh, you know, planning for the for, to be four teams rather than two teams? 
Yeah, I think it, it affords you the ability to maybe suffer a loss here or there. Uh, you can't really suffer two, although it's not unthinkable that we could see a two-loss team. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it allows for the season to not be over. And, and not that it was with the BCS, but it felt, you know, to your point with two teams, it felt a little more imminent that it would go that way. And so I think just the opportunity and just the, the possibilities are so endless a lot of the time when, when you look back at these seasons and say, wow, you know, it, we, we, we counted this team out because they lost. And um, even when Alabama lost to Tennessee, we're like, all right, well, you know, they certainly don't look like a top four team right now, but they could by the time that it matters. And that's something that Bama has proven they can do, you know, year in and year out. And, and I would say the same for Georgia. I mean, even if Georgia suffers a loss at home to Tennessee, it's not over, right? Um, and, and that's where the, the possibilities become really interesting. I, I also think too, you know, just from the SEC perspective, there are people that have the fatigue with the Southeastern Conference getting multiple teams in and all of that and potentially having an all SEC national championship again. But I do think that we have seen, for the most part, the best two teams play in the national championship, which is what the goal was. I'm, I'm all for expansion, can't wait for it to happen. But I think we've had some great games in these national championships, not, not always in the college football playoff semifinals, but in the national championships, we've had some really nice competition. It's been fun. Laura, you've interviewed all these coaches in the league. How would you contrast Kirby Smart and Josh Heupel? <laughs> They're actually, I think, more similar than, than they are different. But, you know, Kirby is somebody who has certainly adopted some of the seriousness of, of just your perennial powerhouse college football coach, right? And, and people like to liken it to being like Saban. I, I think Kirby's who he is. You know, he, he continues to be a guy that isn't afraid to put his personality out there and that, that isn't afraid to put a lot of seriousness on these matchups. I mean, it matters so much to him. I, he's one of these coaches that I think people don't even realize how much he internalizes losses and how quickly he tries to you know, move on from wins to make sure that he's always striving for success and just the constant keeping up with the Joneses that is college football and that is the SEC. And Josh Heupel, um, you know, a little bit more, uh, I, I would say like a little bit more free will, like a little bit more easy going at times, but yet like the ultimate competitor. Both these guys played at a high level of football themselves, you know, so I think when you've played at that level and then you become coaches and you've, and you've coached at big time programs, you sort of know about that. But I, I will point this out. It was funny. We, we had Josh Heupel on SEC Nation before they beat Bama. And we all, we all looked at each other after we we're like, man, he was really relaxed. He had the shirt untucked. He's like out there just talking to the crowd. And, and we thought, man, they they may feel like they have something today against Alabama. And, and sure enough, they did. And the atmosphere played a big piece of that too. But um, it was it's always funny for me to reflect on those interviews, knowing the outcome of the game. On the atmosphere, we've heard some Knoxville personality say they don't think that crowd noise will be a factor. We've heard Kirby try to motivate his guys. Which just your experience, different places you've been, it would hurry up offenses. Do you think the Sanford Stadium crowd plays a role in this game? Oh, it 100% does. I mean, and, and if you're a Georgia fan and you want Georgia to win this game, like, yeah, you should be out there. <laughs> you should be out there really loud and, and cheering really loud. Um, and I, I've done a number of games in Sanford Stadium, and it is loud in there. Now, it's super loud in Neyland, too. So um, that's something that I do think factored in in that game, you know, when Tennessee beat Bama. But that's not taking anything away from Tennessee's talent. Uh, it's interesting, you know, with hurry-up offenses and, and some of the things that they can do, you know, so much of it allows for them to not have to necessarily communicate as much on the field, you know, depends on how many of their plays are scripted, you know, in the first couple series and things like that. But I, I'll be interested to watch how they communicate in what I believe, especially early on, depending on the complexion of the game, will be a really loud, difficult atmosphere for the road team, which is Tennessee in this case. So they're prepared for that, right? But you never know what it's going to be until you actually get out there and do it. And another thing I was thinking about today is I, I don't know that Tennessee's been in the environment that they'll face at this game yet this year, you know, so it's not that they, they won't be well prepared. They certainly will be, but it's different, right? You know, and, and we all know that from watching a lot of these games and being in these atmospheres. Yeah, you've been in all the big games, but this has a historical note. It's a yeah. one versus one. I mean, what do you make of that? Your thoughts of that? And, and is it too early to kind of get a sense for where this game may rank in terms of its historical perspective? Yeah, I mean, how cool, right? That we're, we're gonna get to see this. You know, it's funny, we had this game circled because we wanted to come to Athens for SEC Nation and this one kind of made the most sense just based on the home schedule for the Bulldogs this year. 
and I gotta be honest, we didn't think it was gonna be historical <laughs> one versus one. We thought, you know, it'd be a great game, but we weren't thinking that it would be of this magnitude. And I do think that is a credit to Tennessee and Coach Heupel and these players and the way that they have uh, rebuilt this program to rise to the top, right? And then, you know, I, I, I think that no matter what, we're in for a great matchup. I, I don't see this being a blowout either way. It, it's a really interesting contrasting styles game too so you, you, sometimes those games like okay who's gonna have to play like the other team wants them to play right and, and um, who's gonna inflict their will in a certain way and Georgia has the potential to do that so does Tennessee so I don't know what's gonna happen in this one like a lot a lot of times you get kind of a good feeling going in like hey maybe this will happen or this team's favored or whatever this one I think could really be a toss-up but I think either way gonna be a great game which automatically leads to a classic so for all of us college football fans, I hope that happens.